Yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. And thank you very much for tuning in to episode four of Deal Maker Nick, which is my life story. And this is quite interesting. This is actually when I, uh, 20 years of age, when I actually became an entrepreneur for the very, very first time. Um, for sit the situation that arose, uh, led me to be an entrepreneur. And it's about my initial adventures uh, and doing deals with CBS Records, Virgin Music, Virgin Records, and other companies, and basically going alone in the music business and how I actually found that and the adventures that I had. So let's get into the um, first part of this video. Uh, this is episode four, and I hope you really enjoy the content. So in essence, after after Tony had asked me to leave uh, at the end of uh, January 1982, um, I hadn't had got a clue what to do really with my life. I, I didn't really imagine going back and working in a travel agents. Um, one of the things about working for Tony is once you've had that lifestyle, um, you know, being able to stay in whatever hotel, travel wherever you want to travel to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's very difficult to accept anything less. And um, that was very much the case for me. Um, so I decided to go out on my own. I approached a few people that, um, that we had as clients who seemed to be very, very friendly to me. But actually it transpired, a very good lesson is that, um, you know, um, when you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, you're not. And these people weren't that really weren't that interested in doing business with me. Uh, their loyalty was with the TC, which is understandable. He was an industry professional and I was a young teenager um, just learning the ropes, so to speak. However, that didn't stop me. I, I ended up um, starting getting a batch of uh, independent record labels as clients. Um, among those, among those uh, record labels, not a lot that you will have heard of, but they were they were sufficient to get me started. One was uh, Survival Records, um, which was at, uh, run by a lady called Anne Marie Highway and David Rome. Lovely, lovely people. Um, they had uh, it might be quite modern, but the, uh, to you now, especially in social media, they had a band called Tick and Talk, um, and a few others that they were very hopeful to do things with. Um, I also um, signed up with uh, Keith Bagley, who became um, who actually became the best man at my first wedding, um, at Illuminated Records, um, and he was a very old, much industrialist, a very independent, cutting edge record label, um, at, and I also worked with Martin Hooker of Music for Nations and Food for Thought Records, who'd already had a previously been successful um in the marabone management guys and uh, he was happy for me to um get a few deals for him um the main thing that he had at that time was his heavy metal label music for nations had metallica yeah the the metallica before uh metallica went and did whatever they they did after that but um all the early recordings this would be 1982 onwards were on the uh music for nations label there were there was a couple of other smaller labels um, I had um, which we did deals with because I was asked to do that by other people. Um, no future records who had Peter and the Test Tube Babies um, and a, and a few others, but that basically got me started. And um, yeah, it was very very interesting. And the those labels I mentioned, I you know I wasn't really. A bit like my business life today. I don't know what's going to be the next big hit and what isn't. Um, I have an inkling, uh, but I'm a more of a people person, if that makes sense. I'm judging people, and the pe those people were great people behind those record labels. Um, so I was happy to spend my time working with them, trying to get them a few deals, right, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we did a few deals for, um, for all... Uh, for all three labels, um, quite hard. Um, survival, survival records. I always remember uh, one medium. 
um, medium is the music festival at the end of every January held in Cannes. Um, I think I did, must have done about 20 in a row quite a long time. Um, I was always there and it was always time to do a deal. And we agreed the principle of a deal there um, with a guy called Stuart Slater. Um, uh, for Chris, this was Christmas music for them to become, for Survivor almost to become a satellite office because uh, Chrysalis really liked, uh, Christmas music really liked what Survivor were doing. And uh, a deal was a deal was done, so to speak. And um, everybody was happy. I got, you know, I got some commission from the deal and every, everybody else was, you know, rel relatively happy. Um, what else happened? We also did some deals at the various mediums for for the catalog and licensing deals with different independent record labels overseas for survival. So I, I think survival were pretty happy, you know, were sort of pretty happy with me, so to speak. Uh, then I came across Illuminated Records, as in the Illuminate. They called them, they called it Illuminated Records after the book of the Illuminate. Actually, one of their one of the one of the uh, records that they recorded was actually a live session. With the Illuminata, uh, with the author of the book of the Illuminata in the Chelsea Town Hall, which was quite interesting for its sake itself, but they were very much out there with their music is the best time to, uh, the best way to describe it. Um, but they had a very popular, uh, they had a very very popular music uh, that was by um, a band called Data, and Data was a band. Um, Data was a band uh, made up of a lead singer and George Kayanis. Now, George Kayanis was the lead singer and the focal point of a band called Sailor. If you remember Girls, 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 and this was his new project um, with his, I believe, his girlfriend. And um, it was very, very interesting. And I actually got as far as putting a deal together with Sire Records um, or the, the, the basis of one. But um, there's a long story there seymour stein and i fell out uh, and he wanted to do the deal without me um and so they cut me out of the deal to get the deal done but i a lot a lot of uh, one lesson i learned i screamed and shouted enough and i went to the house and uh, i picked up a check uh just really to just to go away so to speak um which was quite you know which not 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 fantastic, but it, it's always better than something than nothing. Okay, um, but we also did our first deal uh, from Illuminated because uh, they had this album and the single, and we did our first deal in Italy, where it became a top twenty record, um, and it was very, very popular. The band, the album, they were very, very excited about the whole project. Unfortunately, not many other people were at that time. Um, and so um, we were invited uh, by the record label Ariston. Uh, my good friend uh, Graham Johnson was the A and R manager there, and we went to play them all. All of the other stuff we had, and clearly all the other stuff we had was way out there. Uh, it was stuff I, I don't know if you're around that time from Twenty Three could do, could do, uh, uh, Twenty Three could do, um, Four Hundred Blows. And a few other things, and it really wasn't um, really wasn't what they wanted. And um, so they decided, uh, you know, it really wasn't for them. They had a very good day. We went on to uh, we then went drinking in the evening in the hour uh, that night, and I was worse for wear the next day. Um, and we flew back, and um, it was one of the things I didn't know Keith that well at the time. And uh, let's say Keith had had a lot to drink. And the question was whether you wanted to be seen with him with passport control or not. But I decided to be seen with him, got him through. And I remember his wife um, picking up at the airport and she said to me, has Keith, he had a little drinky to a drinky too. And um, yeah, that was that. So after that, but we, we again, after all that whole exploit, we became good friends. I did quite a few deals for Illuminated and everything so that turned out to be, you know, pretty good. We then did a deal for Illuminated uh, with a lady called Tara Butler uh, with 400 Blows. Um, 
with um, CBS in America. It was only a single deal, but we got to go to America, um, which is not, not such a bad thing, um, and uh, negotiate the deal. I always remember Ron Wilcox, head of business affairs for CBS, um, went into his nice big office and they said, who's negotiating the deal? And they said, oh, and I said, I am. And I right then I had long hair. I'm what, what am I, 21, 21 years of age, something like that. Uh, and my client's like 10, 10, 15 years older than me. And uh, clearly he was taken aback. But once we started negotiating the deal, he actually realized I knew everything that there was to know about the music business. Courtesy of Tony Calder, I learned in three years, would it take anybody else 20 years to, to learn? And that was an interesting process and everything everything else got done. And uh, that was really, really, really interesting. And then brings me on to, in this particular section, um, brings me on to, uh, to where we are in uh, the band data that I talked about. We also managed to do a deal finally uh, with Virgin Records Germany, with a guy, the managing director of Virgin Records Germany, a guy called Udo Langer. And I was having lunch with Udo, super, super bloke, super, super bloke. And he let me into a little, I don't know, it's, I would say it's a secret, but it let me, it just reaffirmed. I, I, I knew Richard Branson, I knew most of the people at Virgin. So it was quite, a, you know, it was quite new for me. Um, but it was interesting to find this out. So I said to him, I, I said, how did you get the job at Big Virgin Records, uh, MD? He said it was like this, Nick. Uh, I was working at Areola, which was the licensed label where Virgin were a licensed label. And uh, Richard came in to see me and he said, Udo, I want you to be managing, direct, uh, managing director of Virgin Records Germany, but I'd like you to take a pay cut. And Udo says, you know, I love you and I, I'd do anything for you. But if I was to take a pay cut, my wife would kill me. And, and uh, Richard said, you haven't heard the best part yet. I'm going to give you 20% of the company. And Udo Langer says, I'll take care of my wife. I'm in the job seat. And, I, and he took the job. And what was very, very interesting, uh, within five years of this meeting of mine, uh, six years, five to six years, they had sold out to EMI Records um, for 310, 510 million. And all the managing directors of all the Virgin companies in Europe, or everywhere for that case, um, had become millionaires overnight uh, and also have nice jobs as well, to put it mildly. I have no idea what any of these guys are doing now, but it just goes to show you, uh, you know, Richard really looked after his people. And I think he still does to these days. Um, and it was a very interesting uh, way of doing business, so to speak. And that, and, and that was an eye opener in itself. Um, and I think I should leave you with, um, in this episode anyway, we'll cover more about this section in the next episode. But I thought I should leave you with the way where I was actually sexually discriminated against by Virgin Records. So I was chatting on the phone to Lisa Anderson, who was the head of Virgin Records International. And she said, please let me know, Nick, if you know anyone, I need an assistant um, looking after the Virgin International Network. Um, and I, I, I put the phone down and I thought, hang on a minute. I know everybody at Virgin International. I know how Virgin works. Um, this would be actually a perfect job for me, even though I would have to say, was an independent entrepreneur i thought yeah i could do this job and it might be it might be a lot of fun so i picked up the phone back and i said yeah uh, lisa after what we talked about um yeah, yeah I, I have you have you would you consider would you consider me for the job because i think i could do the job you know i think i'd be probably the best qualified person to do the job she said come and see me and uh we, we went over, um, I can't even remember if we had lunch or not, uh, but we spent some time together. And she said, just give me a couple of days to think about it, but you're super qualified um, and I'm pretty sure you could do the job. So that was fair enough. And about two days later, I can't remember if she called me or I followed up on the call. And she said, Nick, you're perfect for the job, but unfortunately I can't give you the job. And she says, I, uh, I'm into girl power. Uh, all my team is girls, and they're very, very, very good girls. Um, 
and um that's it really i want to I, I don't want to rock at the apple cart by having a guy come in there uh with his testosterone and making a mess of uh, the girl power clearly today uh virgin would adapt adopt a different policy today um because um you can't have that now I, I, there was quite a lot of that in the record business there were i knew another team later on in their life that had girl power um etc cetera, etc cetera. you know you had spice girls with girl power and so forth but you know that was life so i was actually sexually discriminated about not that i kicked up a big fuss or anything like that but um you know it's just one 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 of those one of the things i believe she internally appointed jackie perriman uh to the role and i'm sure she did an absolutely fantastic job so it, there wasn't really any you know any great regret so to speak but it was quite interesting going back in in time like that so in the next episode we'll carry on into another deal i did with virgin music publishing and also um me actually teaming up with tc tony calder again and what that led to etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, bye for now and see you in the next video obviously if you like the video please hit the like button please hit the subscribe button so you get notified of more episodes of dealmaker nick thanks for watching the video and please feel free to connect with me on my personal website nickstuart.co. Really looking forward to hearing from you. Bye for now.